if you have some coffee or something to drink, this is an, I still have my coffee from a couple hours ago. Uh, this is a practice where you can just be yourself. Uh, feel free to do what feels best for you. Mm. And that might mean drinking more coffee. So, or tea or whatever it is. So today's practice is in mindfulness. I am mindful. And I don't think that you see this the correct way. That's okay. It says, I am mindful. I understand the impact my energy has on the world. Also, understand how the world impacts your energy. So it can go both ways. So just being understanding and okay with yourself. If we are feeling a little more tired or if our lives have changed uh, dramatically over the past few weeks, um, just being mindful that that's okay to be in that place. And we will be mindful um, as we go through our practice. So if you have some props, awesome. If not, again, there will be ways to adjust this practice without props. I'm gonna scooch closer to you, let's get, get close here. So if, if I were doing this class here today at the studio, which I'm kind of excited to have this set up right now um, in the actual studio, uh, I would have us all in a circle. So I'd want us to get a little bit more connected to each other. So imagine ourselves in a nice circle with maybe a couple candles in the middle. If you have any candles or any kind of objects, like whether it's statues, candles, flowers, or pictures of loved ones, or crystals, or essential oils, you might want to take those and put them out in front of you to help enhance your practice. So that's always something that you can do. Um, I do actually recommend at home to building your own little yoga altar. So having an altar or a place where you have a few of your favorite things, it might be your props. Um, I'll send that out to everybody actually soon because I want everybody to build their own little home practice space, even if it's tucked away in a corner, but to have somewhere where you set the things that help you to feel just more calm and peaceful and set that atmosphere. So I'm mindful. Welcome to this practice. And for those watching the replay, I'm Ashley. This is Ash's Yoga Studio in downtown Polsbo. It's a beautiful space. I'm very much looking forward to us gathering here again. So we're going to sit nice and tall, just finding, finding that seated pose. A little bit more upright right now. So rather than starting lying down, starting a little more upright. If you're still just sort of waking up, even though it's mid-morning, um, getting more lifted, elevated can help to energize our bodies. So we're gonna sit tall, soften the shoulders, and place your hands on your knees or in your lap with your palms facing up. Close your eyes or look down. And what does it mean to be mindful? In some ways it sounds like your mind is full. It's not necessarily that, it's sort of the opposite of that. It's just to be aware. So let's start to build some awareness to the space around us and within us. Notice what sounds you can hear. Notice what you're feeling, where the connection occurs from your, the ground or your yoga mat to your body. Notice how the air is touching your skin. Also notice how your breath flows in and out through the nose. You'll notice a coolness on the tip of the nose on the inhale and a warmth as you exhale. Notice any areas of tension within your body could be your lower back or your hips, your neck, your shoulders, or maybe you're feeling pretty good. So we're just sitting here and noticing different areas to see and check in. Feel your belly rise and fall, belly, rib cage, and chest. Full expansion and a slow descent as you exhale. In fact, you can take your hands on your belly and let's be mindful of that breath on the lower belly. So if just the middle fingers touching, you can take your hands um, right below the rib cage. And as you inhale, the fingers should separate so they're not touching. And as you exhale, they come back together. 
just the middle fingers touching. So instead of just expanding forward and back, find this breath expanding all sides of the belly, all sides of the torso, like you're blowing up a balloon and then letting the air out. If you think, think of a little, a small child, a baby, think about how they breathe. If you're familiar with babies, they have the best of Buddha belly breaths. So become that little Buddha belly baby and allow that belly to hang out. And then as you exhale, it comes back in. So what our yoga practice is doing for us is actually to help to slow down the aging process in a few different ways. So you come back to the breath that we had when we were a baby. We're all born flexible, mobile, maybe not very strong, but very flexible. And somewhere along the course of our days, we lose some of that. So we're coming back to that flexibility, that deep breath, that ability to stay present right here, right now. We're gonna bring your hands back down to your lap. Take your chin down to your chest. Let's take a bit more movement. Rock your head side to side, left ear to left shoulder, and then right ear to right shoulder. And if you want to take full rotations, if that's good for your neck or okay, go ahead and circle around. You take your head back up to the center and look over your right shoulder or pick a shoulder. Look over that one. And look over at the other shoulder. Back to the center. Reach up. Find a lot of length as you reach up. Soften the shoulders. Bend the elbows and expand. Open up, press the elbows back, exhale. Inhale, reach up again. Round the back, reach forward, tuck the chin and pull the belly in. Inhale, swimming back, take the hands back, reach back, maybe touch the floor, maybe not. Look up. Exhale, round the back, take it forward. Seated cat and cow. So let's keep swimming, big motions with the arms. Hopefully we have plenty of space here and bringing it forward and keep going back and forth. And reach forward and sit up tall as you inhale. Crawl your hands over to, you can pick a side. I'm going to my left side, so you can go left or right. Take one hand on the knee, other hand behind you. Gentle twist, so instead of leaning to the side, we sit tall, press gently into that hand on the knee and look over the shoulder. Just a few breaths, so we're loosening up the joints in that spine and also the muscles that wrap around the spine. And then back to the center, just gonna crawl, 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 crawl up to the other side. One hand on the knee, other hand at the base of the back. Sit nice and tall. Good. And then back to the center. Oh, we've been sitting for a little while, so let's come to hands and knees. Roll yourself forward onto those hands and knees. And we're gonna continue working with a few more gentle twists and same theme that I did in the class prior. Those are a little deeper. The same sort of gentle twists and some movements. So we're on our hands and knees. First, let's wake up a bit more in the shoulders by walking the hands forward to puppy pose. So melt the heart down, melt the chin down. 
look forward and press the palms down. You can imagine yourself like a little puppy stretching out for the day. Every single animal, well, most animals except for humans, move their bodies as soon as they get up in the morning. And that helps to keep the momentum going or energy going for the rest of the day. So if the first thing that we do in the morning is just some nice stretches and movement, that can really set us up for um, a better, more energized day ahead. If we stay sleeping in and hit that snooze button, you can guess how we're going to feel most of the day. All right, shifting forward again. Let's walk the hands back so they're under the shoulders. We already did seated cat and cow, but let's take some twists by pressing into the hands. Lift that left arm up high, open up. Ah. Now rotate through the arm, twisting the hand front to back. It's one of my favorite things to do. Just because it feels uh, like strengthening and working into the shoulder joint that I usually don't go up and down like this, or this sort of movement. And then palm facing forward, reach forward, sit back, big circle as you sit back, bend the elbow, pull through, and then reach up again, lift up, reach forward, down, bend the elbow, pull it back, reach up, one more time, bend the elbow, pull it back, reach up, pause, now slide that left arm underneath the right shoulder for thread the needle. Right hand stays on the ground or reach it forward. So there's a few options there with that right hand. You could take it around the back. We're twisting and feeling a nice stretch out for the upper back, midsection, the core, a little bit of the neck. You can play with shifting the weight forward or back. When you shift more forward into the back of the head, you're going to feel a deeper stretch. And press that right hand down into the floor, rising back up, reach up, open up. This time, expand it. So you might shift onto the left knee a little bit and reach, like exaggerated reach. And bring that hand back down to the floor. Good job. Other side, second side. Reach up, right hand. And rotate like you're twisting in a light bulb, right and left. Being mindful of the shoulder, which way the fingers are going. Release that, reach it forward, sit back. Big arm circle, bend the elbow as you pull back, reach up, inhale. Exhale, pull it back. We've got one more. All right, maybe just one more. <laughs> Let me keep it even. Reach up, hold it, and slide that right arm underneath the left shoulder. Shoulder down, back, the right side, the back of the head is down. Left fingertips on the floor or reaching really wherever you want that left hand to be. Notice if you shift from right to left knee, what different sensation arises. So if you're tightening the ears of the body and want to get into that a little bit more, just a subtle shift, moving the hips or shifting forward, that could help. And pressing into that left hand, take it back down. We'll slide ourselves back up, reach up, exaggerated. Reach back. And take it down. From there, sit into a child's pose, taking the hands back. Get grounded, take the forehead down to the floor. 
and see if we can melt or sink a bit deeper. And one more deep breath. Reach those hands forward, slide them forward. Palms pressed down, heading to our first downward facing dog. Let's shift forward, tuck the toes under, lift the hips, press them back. Ooh, walk it out, pedal the feet, take some movement. First down dog. Let's try this. Walk the feet forward so that the heels are on the floor. So you might do a short stance down dog. Take your right hand to your left ankle or calf and pull. Look underneath the left shoulder. Another little twist. Press down through the left fingertips, especially the index finger and thumb. And then switch sides. Right hand goes forward and down. Left hand finds the ankle or the calf as you look under the right shoulder. And then back to the center. Walk the hands back to the feet. Fold it down. Just hang out. Shake out the head. Like get rid of any tightness so we've got this loose neck head is heavy like it's a rock on a string just hanging out and your head's a bag of rocks <laughs> it's heavy your hands are down you can grab the elbows sway from side to side then bend your knees release your hands and roll yourself up to a standing pose we have to back up here. There we go. So in that standing pose, we're going to take our feet a little bit wider. So a wide stance, a horse stance, bending those knees. Take your hands next to your thighs. Deep breath in, palms to shoulders, inhale. Exhale down. So we're working that breath. Tilt this lightly. And do that again, deep breath in. And slow breath out. It's called base breathing. Nice Tai Chi movement. Pulling energy up, goodness in. Exhale, feeling grounded as you press down. We'll do a few standing Tai Chi type moves today to create simple breath-based movements. Some of my favorites. Okay, from our base breath, let's go to wheel breath. And all we do from here is simple change. Press forward and down as you exhale. Light in the hands and the fingers. Inhale, hands to shoulders. Exhale, take it forward. One more lift. And we take the hands forward and keep them extended. Now we're heading to brush hands. We kind of relax the hands, relax the wrists. Brushing up, reach up, inhale, straight legs. Exhale, bend the knees as you come down. You might touch the floor, might not, but keep the chest lifted. Inhale, rise. Exhale, descend, lower down. I don't know about you, but I have been doing a lot of painting, or we have been at our house. Lots of house projects. Not painting pretty pictures, but painting walls. Inhale, lift up. Now let's turn to the right side. Flex your right foot. It might be the opposite of you. Exhale, you hinge forward over that straight leg. A little bend in that opposite knee. Inhale, reach up and a rainbow across. Exhale, bend that back knee. Reach up. Let's go right and left one more time. Good. 
Reach up and back to the center. Bring the hands to your heart. We're gonna stay in that horse stance. I'm gonna go through a few more Tai Chi style movements with you. Again, some of my really favorite movements because it really just connects breath and body and mindfulness. So being mindful with movement without too much strenuous energy. So we bend the knees again. This one's called cloud hands, or you can call them moon hands, either way. So you take your right hand in front of your face. Actually, I think you're seeing me as if I were a mirror. So I'm gonna say your left hand right in front of your face. Right hand makes a scoop next to your belly. Left hand in front of your face, right hand by your belly, bend a little deeper. We'll turn, get light in the heels, so you're gonna turn on the balls of the feet. We'll turn to the left as you inhale, turn to the left. Exhale, press that left hand away from you. And then we switch. Scoop with the left hand, gazing at the right hand, shift to the right side, inhale. Exhale, press that right hand away. Inhale, left hand, gazing at the palm of the hand, scooping with the left, shift over to the other side. Exhale, pressing left hand away. I'm going to keep doing that back and forth. Finding some flowing motion, some flowing movement. So there's no pauses here. We're just continuing to breathe and take that movement. Gaze is following and connected to the hands. Maybe telling your future in the palm of your hands. going. It's been a while since I've taught this one. I like this one. I forget about it. And let's do two more. And then hands to center, reach up. Exhale, open the arms, bend the knees, big circles in the arms. Here's our last one that we'll do today. It's called Star Series. So you reach up, big circle, bend the knees. Reach up. We've got a couple more. It's usually with a full breath is one rotation. So inhaling up high, exhaling down low. Turn the toes to face the side of the mat so they're parallel to each other. Hands behind the back, interlace the fingers. Palms together or grab the elbows or the wrists. Look up, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Let move the hands from side to side. Relax in the head again. and release the hands down to the floor. Heel toe the feet a little closer together, not all the way though. Heels in, toes out, bend the knees, squat pose. So getting down into a yogi squat. Hands at your heart, lifting tall. Keeping the hips down low. And you might be up here today or a little lower. You can adjust the feet, maybe in closer. It's a great place to hold, find some stillness. Get used to this pose, much like what other poses would be like this pigeon pose, sitting cross-legged on the floor, uh, down dog. <laughs> Anywhere where we want to find comfort and stay for a while. So let's stay here for a few more deep breaths, pressing, pressing into the hands, elbows pressing to the knees. See if you can get that heart, that belly through the legs, the crown of the head a little taller while the hips sink lower. Okay, and we're gonna take the hands down to the floor, sit back, you can use the hands to sit back and <laughs> sit down once again um, and just stay seated for a moment I'm gonna move again adjust this there we go all right so from here 
We've got our nice little seated pose. Let's switch the crossing of the legs so it's different than it was before. So it feels a little different. And your knees might be up high, they might be low. You can take a foot on top or in front. There's so many different ways to sit um, that you've got to find what's comfortable for you. Okay, reach your arms up. Let's take a side bend. Right hand comes down, left arm presses over. Let's turn that palm so it's facing down. Bend the top elbow, press it back, look up. Can you reach the bottom hand out farther? Maybe fingertips only. Fingertips a little farther, a little farther, a little farther. But still maintaining that openness through the front of the body. Let's take that left hand down and around, switch it. Reach in that left hand, right arm up and across. Fingertips, elbow. I find that my fingertips will allow me to reach and slide a little farther, a little farther, a little farther. Palm down at the top, look up. And then bring that top arm down and around. So if you have a block or something, this might be helpful or anything that's gonna lift a little higher for you to place your forehead down in front. So we're just simply gonna fold forward over these crossed legs to create nice little hip opening sensation. So you walk it forward and you might just take the elbows down and stay here. You could take the forehead down to the floor or on something like a block or um, a water bottle or something that's stable or a pillow even. I'd say for a few, uh, maybe about a minute or so. <sighs> See if we can use that pressure on the forehead, that third eye center to help alleviate some tension. Lifting back up, walk your hands back up and set that aside and switch the crossing of the legs again back to the first side that we started with, maybe or just the opposite of what you just did. And instead of the side bend reaching, we take your hands together, interlace the fingers, press them forward, palms forward. Right? We lift up, taking the hands overhead, soften the shoulders. First, lean to the right side, exhale, reach. And you still might keep a little bend in the elbows. Top elbow has to go back. More core strength here, you won't get down quite as low. There's no base to support you. Lift back up. And to the other side. And lift it back up. Press the palms back or the pinkies back. Look up. One more deep breath. And as you exhale, you release that, bringing it forward. Take your block again or walk forward and find a comfortable pose over those legs. So your sit bones grounded. Shoulders soft everything heavy.
And lifting back up. And take our legs then out in front. Ooh, give them a little wiggle side to side. So let's see if I can show this from here. So we're gonna do half hero pose. So get into the quads a little bit. We just did a lot of hips and outer legs and a little bit of the back of the legs. Let's get into the tops of the legs by doing a seated half hero pose. At least that's what I'm gonna call it. So you can bend the right knee and place the foot next to, okay, next to your thigh, roll the calf away and sit into that space between your heel and your left leg. And you might want, uh, maybe you want a blanket or something. You can always try this. If it's a little tight, you take a blanket underneath that long leg side and sit here. So that could be, be very, very helpful. And roll that calf away again. Sit up nice and tall. And instead of folding forward, we're not gonna take it back. So walk it back, keeping the knees closer towards hip distance apart. So as you start to walk it back, you might just lean back just a little bit. You could possibly find the forearms. Keep pressing downward in that right hip and the knee. So we're not lifting up into a back bend, instead we're pulling in and down. And you might find the floor. If this is not, if this is at all painful on the knee or any part of the body, then stay out of it. I'm gonna lift back up. Roll onto that long leg side so you can get that leg back around. Give it a little shake out. Maybe love taps on that right leg, massage. Doing a little dance to my invisible music going on. <laughs> and then take that left leg back. Okay, now you can see it a little better on this side. Roll the calf away. And you can sit on something on that right side. Try to push the side down. Lean to that left side. Careful on that left knee. Sitting tall, and this might be your place to stay. Awesome. Or we start to take it back. You'll feel something different. A little lean back, using your core strength. Maybe elbows, keeping the hip and the knee pressing down. So I want you to feel that sensation, that left leg. And it is nice if you had a teacher or somebody come and press on your hip or press on your leg to keep it down, but can't do that today. And be very careful or mindful if there's anyone in your space, in your home, that you were like, hey, come help me, just just know your limits. And um, there's no need, I think, in this month or two, however long we're staying at home, to really have to push yourself. It's okay to just maintain or to stay present without having to um, push into crazy poses. There's no, no need for that. I mean, regularly, there's no need. But especially now that we don't have teachers watching us intently. And then we're going to come back out of this one. Lift it up. Core strength draws you up. Lean to that right side, bring that leg around, give it a little shake out, get a little massage on that left leg. Or both legs. Oh, I wish I could get a massage right now. All right, we'll take our feet together. But instead of, if you have blocks, that's actually really helpful. Feet together, but not super close. Feet together, but in a diamond shape. I'm gonna use my blocks underneath my knees because it's just more comfortable for me. Uh, so that there's actually a weird tendon that tends to pull when I come forward on my 
right hamstring. So I'm gonna kick blocks underneath the knees in this diamond-like shape. Then you take it forward and just relax right here. And so again, if you had a pillow or a bolster, if not, that's okay too. And a little round in the back is fine as long as you're not you know, forcing into it or trying to get somewhere. So we're just relaxing over those legs and letting them hang open. Right, let's bring ourselves back up. Close the knee. It's going to end up lying down from here. So we have a little more time for some supine poses. So feet to the top of the mat. Roll yourself down or take it down slowly. Knees. Let's take the feet mat width apart and then just knock the knees together for a moment. You can take the hands overhead or uh, by your side. But just to do the opposite of that open leg variation, just take those feet wide, knees together, touching. Right, heel toe those feet a little closer, maybe um, just inside mat distance. Take the knees right over the, over the heels and rock the knees side to side, right to left. So we'll do some movements. This is still uh, movement practice, trying to, trying to gently energize our bodies. No need to take it crazy. A little bit of movement and sunshine, better than none. So thank you for being here. And hopefully the sun sh is shining today. It's so helpful just for life in general <laughs> when we can get a little sunshine. Right, take the knees back up to the top. Walk the feet closer to your backside. We'll do some flowing bridge poses. So let's take the palms down, knees up. Press into the shoulders and the backs of the head, the back of the head press into the feet and then lift the hips. And as you peel your hips up and slowly lift, our hands reach overhead as well. When you get to the fullest expression of the bridge pose, hopefully the thumbs are at the back on the floor. And we can lower back down, rainbow hands and hips come down. Touching down at the same time. Let's do that a few more times, inhaling. Rising, lifting, opening. Exhale, bringing it down. We've got two more and we're gonna hold in one of these bridge poses. If you've got a block, we'll do supported bridge pose or you can hold and just stay active upright in that hips up position. One more flowing bridge. Then lower back down. And keeping the hands down, and the hips, hips will rise again. And if you want to take that block underneath, you can. Awesome. Or you can use a blanket or something just to give you a little elevation. And then putting your weight onto that block. We can stay here or walk the feet forward and let the feet fall open for just sort of like a banana type pose. 
And if you want a pillow for something underneath your head, that works too. Can you relax any part of the body? Because now we've got the support. Relax the legs, the back, the shoulders, hamstrings. No tension here. Just allowing gravity to bring you down, but keep having that block keep you lifted. And then pressing into the feet, let's release that. So press activate first to lift so you can slide the block or whatever you had underneath you from away from you, place it down. Cross that right leg, right leg goes straight up, and then cross it over the left leg. Lift the knees towards your upper body. You can grab a foot or maybe both feet. Oh, <laughs> hello hips again. Um, grab the feet. Bend the knees a lot and just feel that it's a cow face legs, but feel the outer hips again in that sort of bound position. You can straighten the legs a little more or bend them. But here in that rocking from side to side might help. and then bend the knees a lot, let go of the feet, but keep the right leg over the left, left foot coming down to the floor. So you just got this cross going on. Use your left hand to take the legs across. So you might lift up onto the left hip and take your legs across the body into that twist. Right arm extended. If something else feels nicer for this twist, like single leg or you want to you know, change it up a bit, just make sure that we're adding this Nice supine twist to our practice. And bringing that leg back up to the top, both legs, unwind the legs, hug the right knee in, and just give us some movement side to side. Maybe grab the foot, I like that one, grab the foot and rock it side to side like a half happy baby. If you wanna take any other sort of movement with that right leg, just enjoy this right leg stretchy time. Rotate through the right ankle a few times. And I'm gonna switch it. So bending both knees, take that left leg and wrap it above the left, the right. And your left on top of right. Lift the knees, the feet off the floor, grab onto the feet. And feel that that little pull and if the feet, if you've got more like one ankle over the other and more in a figure four pose, that actually works too, just fine. This uh, cow face legs might be a little bit intense for anyone with tight hips. And then try to straighten the legs a little bit. Simple movements, pulling back farther and releasing.
then release the hands from the feet. Place the right foot back down. That left leg is still over the right. Lift up the lower, the lower back, then turn so you're on the right hip as you bring your left leg across, or both legs across the body onto that, into that twist. And adjusting as needed into your supine twist to make sure that our spine is long, our bodies feel more relaxed, and you feel this nice gentle twist along the entire spine as your left shoulder touches the ground, left arm on the ground, gazing to the left. And bring your legs back to the top. <laughs> Unwind, unravel, hug that left knee in. You can keep the right knee bent or straight, it's up to you. So you just rock that left leg side to side. You might grab the foot and take some whew, different kinds of movement based on your own body. So not trying to follow me at all. And then hug both knees in. We'll roll side to side. Let's take both legs straight up, up to the sky. If you have something you want to place under your back to get a little higher and also to alleviate any tightness or tension in the back of the leg. So you can place a block or a blanket or a pillow underneath your low back. So legs fall, our legs are not falling. The legs are straight up and the hands fall down towards the ground. Palms can still face up. See if we can soften a bit more through those areas of the body we don't need to activate, such as the face, the jawline, the shoulders. They're done, head is heavy. And then slowly bending the knees, placing them back down to the floor. If you have a block underneath you or something, you can take it out from underneath. Take those feet together and then open those knees wide and just let the, the knees fall. Again, blocks or pillows can go underneath the legs for a little more support. And this is where we are going to head into Shavasana or a final relaxation. So you can stay with this pose for a little while, adjust whenever you'd like to make a change. Um, if you have a blanket, uh, though even just the weight of a blanket on your body, just on top of you, can help to allow you to feel more grounded and relaxed. So you can choose to put, that's why these, these blankets are so great, because they're a little heavier. 
could choose to put a blanket around you or stay where you are. And let's take a few minutes to just unwind. Allowing for this silence, this place of non-productivity and just to be, nothing else, nothing more, nothing less, just being. And if we can find that mindfulness once again, just becoming aware. Yoga is a practice of witnessing, the art of witnessing yourself and that which is around you. So start to notice as you relax, a few minutes of Shavasana.
Let's take a deep breath in if you're still around here. Wiggle your fingers and your toes, a little extended shavasana. Mm, big good morning stretch to go throughout the day, heading towards that late morning time, ready to arise. Roll to your side. Mm. Bend the knees. Get comfy, get cozy, take another deep breath. And let it go. Press back up to a seated pose. We'll finish together in a mindful way. So every move you take, just being mindful of that connection between you and your surroundings. And hopefully our yoga practice goes beyond our mat and into our everyday life. So sitting up tall, reach those arms up, inhale. Connecting our practice, our mindfulness, bring it down to your heart, exhale. One deep breath in. And a slow exhale out. Pause for a moment. Keep breathing. And remember, let's understand the impact my energy has on the world and the impact that the world has on my energy. And remind yourself that how you're feeling in this moment is exactly where you need to be. Thank you for joining in this Saturday morning yoga practice. I'll see you again soon. Namaste. Done.